a woman loses 5% of bone per year, okay? No matter how much vitamin D, which I love, calcium, which I don't love that much, you eat and work out, you can't make more bone in menopause. You need osteoblasts. Osteoblasts only make bone via testosterone. If you go on testosterone, estrogen, and pellets together, you gain 8.3% of bone mass per year. Well, let's put it in real numbers. Around 50,000 women a year die of osteoporosis. Around 40,000 a year die of breast cancer, all right? We can almost eliminate osteoporosis to zero by taking a bioidentical hormone system. Hey, Dr. Remke, how you doing, sweetheart? I'm awesome. Do you have a beard going on? Oh, my gosh. Six days. I know. I know. I, I do it about every three months. I do about a week or so, but it'll be okay. shaved off. If it wasn't gray, I might keep it, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Actually, it looks pretty good on you. I'm, I'm, I'm not real partial to the beard, so when they look good, I'm like, oh, that looks pretty good yeah, on my you. Wife want, my wife wants it off three days ago, so it's probably what I, That's what I'm... I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't get it. I, <laughs> from the woman's perspective, I'm like, can you get that thing off your face? I, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Well, listen. So, you guys, everybody, this is Dr. Greg Brandon. We have talked before on here, but if you're new to following him, he's an OBGYN that now... Uh, primarily focuses on hormone optimization and peak performance and all kinds of things. And he sees men and women. Um, and you just always drop some gems and some things. I, I don't really know if I have an agenda. Do, do you have anything that's like you want to talk about a rant lately from practice or anything that, to kick us off? Or we could just I, end up talking about testosterone because I just want to be led so by you. all I want to do. You lead, I'm yours. All right. Well, let's talk about testosterone because I've been learning a whole lot more and I think it's just part of the energy of culturally, this right. epidemic of low testosterone that yeah. we're, we're seeing. Um, I'm seeing clinically in practice, a lot of things I've never seen before because of like, what's going on, right? right. And I think we're seeing culturally, socially, um, the devastation of not only women, people don't think about women, but I mean, significantly men that are walking around with testosterone levels that um, are much lower than they should be yep. and how it affects their mental health, their emotional health, their behaviors and the impact on society at large. That's something I think about quite a bit, actually, more than I thought I would. Um, certainly 10 years ago in practice, I wasn't thinking that much about testosterone. Five years, it was becoming a lot. Now, it's like I have that conversation almost every day with a patient. And I find it to be, and maybe you speak to this, like it's a hard conversation for the patient to hear. Like they don't want to hear it. They want to fight me on it. They don't want to get their hormones tested. And if, if we do test them, they certainly fight me on replacement therapy where I'm like, why are you fighting this whole thing? I mean, I had a my last consult last night and one today, la ending both days, was about hormone replacement, basically. One was a woman fighting me, 54 years old. Why? What's wrong with me? Why can't I lose this weight? I've gained 18 pounds. And I kept going, I've been telling you, why are you fighting me on getting your hormones replaced? You don't have any testosterone. Like, what? what's the problem here? So... I'm always looking for more explanation or ways to teach people to help empower them. And from you're the guy who really does the labs, does the replacement, suggests when people do it, don't do it. Let's talk about it. Um, I would and love to. What's going on? Yeah, we've written, I've written three books on this. The last one, the, the, the Hormone Handbook. We go through a lot of this. I'm right now working on a new book. This book is more for, I'll, I'll say, doctors, PhD, scientists. We actually the working diet, the working chapter is unbalanced because that's the working name of our title of our book. Is I collected about twelve thousand articles in the last ten years because I want to prove to show the science. I think our first book does a good job on it, but I want this one because I believe your patients, which was me fifteen years ago, which was my patient in my OB practice, it's very confusion. Hormones cause cancer. Hormones do this. Hormones cause this, and that's a fallacy. And here's what's really important to understand is that without hormones, you and I are dead. Okay, that, that's very important to understand. Without that, we're not here. So the question is, what's a good range? And um, 
that has changed. Travis did uh, look at the last five decades. Men lose a, a testosterone at roughly 2% per year. Women, here's the range. 1940s, 50s, a woman was between, say, 90 and 250 was her testosterone level. Today, LabCorp says 3 to 41 is normal. Okay? That's before menopause. Um, Wait, say those numbers again. Okay. It's about 70 to 90 to 250, 300. What, that what, was the, the, what are the eight? What are the years on this? Like, what was what was the other number? Okay, so this is the range. Say nine. Yeah, but what how, what decades was this? Oh no, I'm what? just talking. Oh, this is about the 30s to 50s. We have most in the 60s. Okay. And early okay. 70s. So roughly 50 years ago, a woman was between say in her peak before menopause was between say 70 and 250. Okay? okay, that was where she was spontaneously. Yeah. Today it's three to 41. If they even check it. That's right. That's number one. Number two, a man was between 800 and around 1400. Today, Duke says 170 to 700. All right. In fact, LabCorp, their men's data was on June 30th of 2016, it was 350 to 1197. On July 1st, Sixty-four to nine sixteen overnight. All right. So what they do is they check ten thousand people. They get a median, two standard deviations, and call that a range. But what if you check ten thousand unhealthy people? So I want to. I'm a smart man. I'm a simple guy. When we lose thyroid, every doctor agrees replace thyroid. You don't replace age-related thyroid. We all agree if you lose insulin, replace insulin. But when you lose gonads, ovaries, or testicles, hey, here's a Zoloft, here's a Prozac, suck it up as part of life. When testosterone is over 400 functions in both men and women. And, we, and that's what we go over our book. You look at the data, metabolic syndrome, diabetes, um, atherosclerosis. Those are because of low numbers, not high numbers. But, but Dr. Remke, here's the big one. The fear is, the fear is, I'll go over, I'm going to go women first, is cancer of the breast, Okay. In the 1930s to 60s, breast cancer is about one in 20 in America. Now it's one in seven. So again, what's changed? One big thing is iodine. Iodine, we used to have about 25 milligrams a day. Now we eat about 50 micrograms a day. Japan still eats 25 milligrams a day, and their breast cancer rate is one in 20. It's another, it's another thing, but it does. We all know what it does in glandular cells. Next thing is when you look at the data of the breast cancer, if, if hormones cause breast cancer, then why is every 25-year-old pregnant woman not have breast cancer? And that's where it gets really nerdy on this. There are three estrogens, E1, E2, E3. E2, and each one has two receptors, an alpha and a beta. The alpha is pro-growth, the beta is anti-growth. So E1, which dominates in menopause, is a five to one pro-growth. E2, which dominates in breasts when you're young, is a neutral one-to-one. -one. Where's most breast cancers? In menopause. It's the type of estrogen. It's not estradiol in the breast. And then they get really, really nerdy on this was that study in 2002 that said hormones cause breast cancer. Let's go over that study. From 1935 to 19, 2002, every paper on hormones, virtually every single one did not show an increase in breast cancer. They showed an increase in Dementia and cardiovascular disease if you are not on hormones. So this world-famous paper came out in 2002 by the WHI that said hormones cause cancer. They didn't give estrogen. They didn't give progesterone. They gave Premarin, which is pregnant female horse urine, and Provera, which is a progestin. Now listen to this, listen to this study, uh, the Dr. Remka. It was 10,000 healthy women. I'm using that in quotations. <laughs> Dr. Desai, a world-famous... Um, uh, oncologists destroyed this paper in 2002 when it came out. The ad, so first off is 5,000 dropped out. So that's only 5,000 study. The average lady in his healthy population was 63 and a half, half were overweight, half had high blood pressure, half smoked, a third had a heart attack. So that's the population. One arm was Premarin. Again, pregnant female horse urine. One was Premarin plus progestin. They don't tell you this. The Premarin arm by itself had no increased breast cancer. Even though it's synthetic, even though it's horse urine, it had none. 
the Provera arm increased to 24%. The next day in all the news, hormones cause breast cancer. So I called a world famous professor, Dr. Michelle is my professor who trained me since passed away. I called up, I said, Dr. Michelle, how do you throw 80 years later out the door? He goes, I trained you well, keep giving it. So I, in my OB practice, I had seminars every week for my patients and educated them on that. And they stayed on it. Now Hopkins went back and looked at those patients. How many women per year's lives are saved by stopping Premier Provera? You ready for this? 19,000 extra deaths a year because of heart attack, stroke, and dementia. Then they went back and looked at the 24% with breast cancer. They were living longer, even though they had breast cancer, because they had less heart attack, stroke, and dementia. Hmm. Now, Dr. Firino in France, this is all my, my first book, he looked at 134,000 women. He made it simple. Estrogen, progesterone, bioidentical, estrogen, provera. The estrogen progesterone arm decreased breast cancer 10%. The Provera arm increased to 69%. It's the Provera. It's a different structure, different metabolism. So when we hear this, Doc, it drives me crazy because you get young, healthy women, 52, 53. They're losing 5% of bone every year. Their, their bottoms are changing. Their brain's changing. Their cardiovascular, a woman's cardiovascular risk factor equals the same as a man by 65. Well, why? You're losing your hormones. Yeah. So I, I, and I here's the thing. No, I love it. So here's a, so you, a few things. So you guys, I'm not going to recap that. Here's where I come at it. Where I liked how you said, and this is the, what I, my argument I give to patients, the same thing. I'm like, what? I don't understand. I don't, I, I'm kind of at that point too over here. Like, let me play dumb person, dumb right. lay person. Uh, we replace the thyroid. <laughs> we replace insulin. I mean, none of you have any problem with this. What is your big deal with understanding you need to replace this? And I get it's because it's sexual, it's virility, it's fertility, and we've attached all this emotional stuff to it. Like, oh God, it means I'm getting older. I have to admit, I recently, when I did my hormone testing, I turned, what day is this? Anyway, this month, nine days or something, I turned 49. I still ovulate, and I'm like, knock on wood, I'm proud of that. But there was a tank, right? There right. was a drop. This last wow. year, I was not right. I didn't feel right. Everything was harder. I'm like, nothing I'm doing is working the same. <laughs> like, right. why am I gained weight? I'm tired. Working out is hard. I'm exhausted. Why am I exhausted instead of feeling <laughs> like this did something, right? Um, sleep was hard. You know, but I still had periods. I still, no, no prop, nothing big. There was a little bit more clotting. Like, oh, this is that perimenopausal thing. You know what I mean? No hot flashes, nothing weird. But I'm like, my sleep isn't great. I, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm getting fat. I'm, I seem like I'm losing muscle. Like, nothing's working. I'm tired. I can't, and I, maybe not thinking it. I'm like, I'm not, I'm a little bit different. I'm a little bit more emotional, a little bit not as optimistic as I used to be, taking more GABA, taking more tryptophan, <laughs> taking more stuff to calm it down. How much CBD can I take? You know, in a good position for an OBGYN, was, I, I think I may have said, do you think I need progesterone? <laughs> you know? Like, are we at that point? And another doc, you know, was like, uh, somebody, you might need testosterone. And I, and I have to admit, I get it. I'm a woman and I had a what do you mean? No. Real quick. Women at their peaks in their 20s and 30s, in the optimal ages, uh, you know, in the 30s, 40s, 50s, made four to 10 times more testosterone than they make estrogen. I, that's what I'm saying. People don't understand. I knew I had a lot of testosterone. But, but think about this. Though, yeah. We don't, I don't have that patient experience. People are coming to me. They already went to their, their doctor, their gynecologist, their primary care doctor, which I'm an OBGYN. That's all the stuff on the wall is for years. Yeah. It's, but their answer is all from Prozac. And they're going, no, that can't be it. And so they're, yeah. they're searching for this. They've done research for this. They've, they've yeah. come to us. About every new, about one, every, every new patient comes to us refers about four. So we, they, we, they're searching. I want to be an educator. They're searching for this data. So I'm finding people looking for an answer. Uh, but again, I don't think the biasness is actually the sexuality part. I know it's sold as like. We well, I think there's some of it. I, I, oh, no, I no, think no, there no, is no. because I, I, this is where I'm at with these patients. Like. They, they, they sit there and look at me and I'm like, I'm you're 53, you. you're 50, you know, like there's going to be changes. And I do believe we are prematurely aging like no, because I'm... of the environment. And we're, uh, like, you that. said it, you proved it in those numbers. Yeah, we'll go over that later. That... You know, 40 years ago, what the, yeah. you guys, but I want everybody to hear that. Why are your numbers tanking? You're being poisoned to death. 
Okay. Again, but the sex part is, is sold by some places. Like, you know, like the commercials, the, the, the estrogen boosters, which don't work. The, your women like it too. That's not it. I agree with that. But it is, it's, this is for health. By oh, no, no, but I'm just saying, I think the psychological resistance well, I agree. that we're having, like, because I, I just kind of keep going. But I'm going to tell you. Why I, are you guys fighting me on this? I believe it's the doctors more so than the patients who are against it in the sense of their, their fight aging. They don't want to hear it. It's more the doctors have told them that's snake oil. That's voodoo. That's okay. not. Okay, talk more about that. Because, because the doctor. Because you know, I happen to know all my friends are like you. So it's not yeah, the. Well, the thing is, most doctors, they'll look. Oh, Duke says 17700 A woman, at eh, three, you're fine. They've never done the research. And I was that doctor. Okay. In my book, I put my arrogance led to my ignorance. That was okay. me. And I'm not here to poo-poo them. It's, it's like, but I just don't believe if we lose X, why not replace X? We don't, we do that everywhere else, yeah. but here. And that's what bothers me. That's why, that's why I think it's important, but I don't, but I don't want to convince doctors this is good. That's, I love Dr. Jason Fung's book, his first book, Obesity Code. He says, why would you take advice from a fat doctor? And yeah. I think that's really important. Do we, pre do, we do, do, we, do we do what we preach? And that's why health is crucially important. I'm, I'm, just a, I'm a huge believer in liberty. And I don't believe you can be free unless you're healthy. And I don't believe you could. I think youth is actually not chronological. It's, it's your mind. But if you have the body in which you could attain that, whatever your dreams are at 80 or 90 or 70, I don't care. The sad part is, Doc, 25% of our patients, we got about 9,000 patients, are under the age of 30. Under the age of 30. And the two, re the two number of reasons why I see people, an 18-year-old male, a nine-year-old woman, is this. Tired of being tired and brain fog. Number one, number two. It's not muscle. It's not libido. It's there, but it's not that. And then when you get this beautiful, can you drive a Ferrari with no gas? Of course not. If you're a car mechanic guy and they come to you and you, and you go, hey, do, hey, hey, uh, uh, hey, Joe, I got my new Ferrari. I've washed it. I waxed it. I put air in the tires. I've done everything, but it won't drive. And he goes, you check the gas? That's all this is. We're all Ferraris. Just give yeah. me gas. And the thyroid is the carburetor, put oxygen in the tank, and let me run. And that's what we do here at OptoBio. So what about this new book is, so you're writing this more for the, for the doctor. That's I'm taking about about 70 references in my book, The Hormone Handbook. And I'm going to make that to about 400. And oh. we're going to write it with pure, the first chapter is all neuroendocrinology. I'm going to do the structure. It's going to be repetitive for all these doctors. But I want right. to know that we know the material. And then I'm going to ask us questions. Here's the part we're talking about is, what is the range today? Great. Here's the range, 3 to 41. For men, 170 to 700. Great. My next question is, what was it 30 years ago? How many people think that? You know, we don't think right. that. So I'm going to show them the data. And then I'm going to show them the sequelae of being lower. And again, we got 10,000 articles on atherosclerosis and diabetes. I'm working right now with a human performance expert, um, a public figure, we'll talk later when we, we, we acknowledge this, but it's everything is hyperinsulinemia. Insul insulin is a neurotransmitter in the brain. And when you get very high in your brain, it down regulates its own absorption. So the brain can't talk to each other. So how do you do that? Of course, lower sugar, but what's the core to that? It's testosterone and growth hormone. When those two are at optimal ranges, the brain's optimal, the liver's optimal, the pancreas optimal. So human performance is what we're fighting for here. Not for gold medals, but for today's life, we have an Olympic event every day. And I want us to be prepared for that. Your gold medal is today. And so we're trying to take all these things we're using high, uh, high expert athletes or our military and adjust that for schmoes like you and I to be our best in our field. And right. again, we have now, you know, I've been doing this for 12 years and I had a doctor come in yesterday, uh, an, an ER doc, very skeptical. She only came because she heard of her reputation, looked at her reviews. And she came here twice and drilled me for an hour. And then she got placed. And a month later, she came back. She goes, it's a game changer. She goes, can I do a franchise in my office? I mean, it's, it was insane. She goes, I cannot believe we're not taught to ask these questions. And I'm finding today medicine, I don't know, when we were training, the Socratic method was how you were taught. It was you stood there and you got drilled so you understand why you believe what you believe. Obviously, we have to memorize organic and memorize. I got that. But what are you thinking, Greg? Because medicine is an art. 
Yes. Now it becomes so cookie cutter. They're not taught that way anymore. No, they're not either. at all. No, no. it's <laughs> guidelines, follow. They're really moving it towards AI, right. where the doctor just plugs symptoms in and a computer you make picks out medications. Making me cry. As an OB, there's an art to when you put a four step in, when you had to do an emergency thing. Um, so since that time, I've been very fortunate. I've been the A four M. Now I'm a fellow. I'm certified and all that in functional integrative medicine as well. It's just I'm not saying one's better than the other. It's just there's a combination. I think everybody has their story, and, and Mr. Rimka, if they, if you listen to their story, their story takes you down their path. And then I like to do is I draw pictures. I have a big whiteboard here, and I draw, I draw how the brain works on all that. Yeah. I yeah. do that on every single patient. And then we hear their story. We get their numbers and plug it in, and we show them the data we're looking for. And then the cool part is, is they are the pure objective result of this works or not works and we got like a 98 90 percent retention rate but yeah. it's not hard because i'm putting gas in a ferrari right How hard let me ask you a, a question yes. let me ask you a question here so something that i recommend right people like i got a new 18 year old patient male right one of the labs i want i'm more he's coming for brain issues right? right i said but something i want i definitely want is testosterone okay what? i want you know free and total i'm like oh yeah we're getting that and it's one of those things they may have paid out of pocket i'm like i don't care you should always have this at an 18 year old because I want you to know this number when you're 65. Yep. The problem we have now though, doc, is I got 18 year olds are gonna have jacked up testosterone for like kind of like sort of the first time in history. We're gonna see 18 and 19 year olds with a super depleted and depressed testosterone, right? Okay. So the, right, so we're seeing this. I, I, see, that, I see it every day. My so, average 18 year old guy walks in here. It's like here, where, what, what do we do to tell the 18 year old or maybe the mother of the 13 year old is there a way that we can start teaching to be like oh boy because we can't have 700 be your normal or <laughs> or 200 or whatever yeah. you know what i mean most my teenagers are referred by their mom and dad just like just like you said hey you, and i won't see anybody under 18. so um and then we check them and i can't stress you enough 18 to 22 year olds it's just a boy. He's just tired. They're slower than girls. Da da da. You check their levels, and I get. I had a gay guy, guy come the other day. He was 18 years of age. His level was 111, and this would surprise me a lot 12 years oh. ago. Not at all. Today. Yeah. It, I know it's so like. Oh my god. No, no. So therefore, that's why. And again, this generation of uh, men under 35, their sperm count is 50 percent my generation. That paper came out two summers ago. So we're seeing the end results of this. The Hebrew University says by 2050, men in the Western civil, Western Europe and North America, South America, Australia will be infertile. Okay, they're given this data by just by math, by just math. Uh, California, first time in their history, is a negative growth. So these things are real. So we never look at the cause, and that's what you say when you go, "Well, what's the cause?" Well, PVC piping is where water goes through, and that PVC piping affects the brain, neuroendocrine development. We don't think that these ba these 18, 25 year old kids, men and women, they were in the womb of mommies being coded. There's a great paper. They're looking at a 200, there's 2000 women looking at 200 um, neuroendocrine disruptors in these the placentas. And all 2000 women had all 200 of them in their placentas. So it's an environmental battle we are. Our body is built to survive, but it's really built to thrive. And what I'm trying to do is give us these numbers so we can thrive in this hostile environment. So let's say you got, so they got this 18 year old, right? We got, he's tanked. He's, he is what it is. This yep. is where we're at. Yep. What's kind of a, kind of an approach. Let's see what kind of hope we can give some people here. Like, what are we going to do? So oh. is the idea like he's got to be on hormone replacement for life? Or well, the an something? answer is got to means no. The, 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 would you have to, if you lost your pancreas, would you be on insulin for life? Yes. Well, yeah. Okay. We can't make the testicles make more. So whatever they have, they have. The first thing I like to do is talk to them. See what there's, what they do for fun. A lot of these young kids are just dopaminic blown out with these video games. So I try to teach them about going to a sleep hygiene. I try to teach them about how important fat is, get rid of carbohydrates. While we're testing their two energy sources, their, their thyroid, and this is important. I just don't check TSH and T4. Back to our numbers again. When, when I was in school, anything over two is considered bad for TSH. Now it's 5.3. So I, I check TSH. T free T4, free T3, reverse T3. That ratio is the most important. I check for antibodies against the, um, the gluten molecule and casein molecules in the gut for Hashimoto's and Graves' disease. So we check the, the oxygen. Then we check the, the hormones. And then 
I love to see, and then we talk about their diet and how they sleep. So then we put a plan together for them. And I like people to get out and be exercised, but you can't exercise, you don't have fuel yet. So I put it all together, but I try to, I try to make sure they understand, if you get back to our energy again, you can't be energetic if you have no gas. So the cool part is if, we, if they're under, say, if they're under 700, I'll treat them. Uh, Dr. Morgan Tower's book, Testosterone for Life, he recommends treat anybody under 7,800 if they're symptomatic. If they come in at 800, they feel great. No need, no need. It's, it's the symptoms will drive us. The, the numbers are our guideposts. And there's a great book called Testosterone, which is written out of Germany, that talks about the androgen receptor at the DNA level. And when the uh, messenger RNA is reading the DNA to make the androgen receptor, it ends with the period is a CAG. A C-A-G. And when you have three of those nucleotides, uh, five of those nucleotide sequences, then the messenger RNA goes, we're done reading. We know we're done. If it takes over 11 to do that instead of five, we know the receptor is a lot less sensitive. So I'm finding I may feel great at 1,200. My friend may feel great at 930. I have another guy who feels better at 1,400. Don't care what the numbers. I want to know how they feel. Same thing with a young man like that. So to me, it's symptom driven. It's really cool. I get these boys who have not slept well. Their focus is gone. And their moms and dads go, oh, my gosh. They're sleeping. They're waking up refreshed. And they're, they're in the gym again. They're, they're, they're waking up again. Because yeah. when you go from 150 to 1,100, and it's not like a roller coaster. It's a steady state. And then that's just who you are. And then when it gets back to about 800, we place you again. That's about four to six months for the man we're talking about. But it's yeah. great to watch people wake up. I mean, Dr. Can Rimbaud, you explain the testosterone dopamine connection? You mentioned dopamine, but people may not know exactly how these two are related. Yeah, it's very, you're the, you're the brain on brain. So we'll go over that. But our neurotransmitters are made in, believe it, in our gut by bacteria. So the serotonin precursors, dopamine precursors, the, neuro, the neuro, uh, epinephrine precursors are made by bacteria in our gut. That's why probiotics are crucial. They, go, they travel from the vagal nerve to the brain. And the NIH wrote a great paper on this in 2013. They don't actually know the mechanism, but they know testosterone and vitamin D work on the brain's neuroplasticity to absorb these precursors to now in the neurons, in the presynaptic area, to concentrate them so they release at proper levels. And then the other neuron could actually grab them better. That's why omega-3s are very important, too, for the neuroplasticity of the neuron itself. So it's complex, but the bottom line is they're intertwined. So when you have the, uh, give people an example, cocaine increases dopamine, okay? Intimacy increases dopamine. So when you have intimacy, like intimacy does that. So when you have that in surges, that's why you have those ups. You have a constant steady state of it. That's how you want to be. And the testosterone plateaus that out. Um, okay. Can you... Well, speak to, because you probably could speak to it based on the science, how the dopamine and testosterone like play with each other, right? So it's dopamine. If you're blowing that oh. up, your testosterone goes, right? Explain uh, to them how, because yeah. you guys, they relate. Not everybody knows, understands. Well, dopamine, a, again, by the brain, it makes you feel good. Yeah. Okay. It's a molecule so, of more. I, I think most people actually, it, dopamine makes you search. Right. And dopamine so makes you keep going. Right. Um, it's not happiness. Right. It is, it is striving and it's actually dissatisfaction. I mean, exactly. people actually kind of like, so you need to be a little dissatisfied to keep working harder for something. It's a novelty. It's searching for change as where serotonin is happiness. Serotonin keeps, you're, you're, you're satisfied. You don't need to change anything. So they're, they, they have a weird thing. Now, dopamine and testosterone have a relationship, however. So if yeah. your testosterone is tanking, Dopa your dopamine is going to be tanking 100%. from that pathway. That, that, um, and not everybody well, knows that. Yeah. But that, and, that, if you're, and if you're blowing out dopamine from addictive behavior is what you're saying, you can have the reciprocal action on also bringing testosterone down. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And just yeah. think about one it. way. You one think way. a lot of our military, when they come back from the tours, I get them under 100 every time. Ugh, I know. Yeah, you were the one that, you know, I didn't think about, you know, military. And, oh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, now you can't. Okay, good. Yes, I hear um, you. With you, you were the one in that one interview that talked about um, just happenstance. You weren't treating these patients for PTSD with testosterone. You just knew they needed it, and right. so many were resolved, and it made total sense. And it was my thinking didn't think of it that way because I think neurofeedback. I think neurotransmitters, neurofeedback, you know, trauma therapy. So that's what I do in practice, right? And it was right. really illuminating for me to and able to look back and go, wow, 
no wonder sometimes when we did the hormone replacement, I referred out to my naturopath and said, okay, I, he needs testosterone, we need thyroid, but get that done first and I'll do this. How it worked together so well and how much I was maybe not understanding that was really also having such a huge impact. So it's really um, opened my lens in practice to really see that more. And it's interesting because people will come to me for like the, the brain thing, the neurofeedback, the neurotransmitters. Can you test my, so they're like, they're kind of hyper-focused and obsessed with their gut, want me to run all these gut tests. And then I say, actually, we need to see how these hormones are. I need to see the thyroid. I need to see the, the sex hormones and stuff. They're kind of like, why? You know, and I'm like, yeah, because none of this, mat you might not need any of this. You might just need that. And it's, it's not like it's good for business because I don't do that. I have to refer it out mostly. And it, but it's funny because they're, they're kind of surprised. And I think it's because I guess they're, none of their physicians have told them this. I'm like, I'm sorry they don't know this, but this is what we need to see. I have to rule this out. And if we're going to do anything, this should be this, you know, the gas in the tank first before I start tinkering with, you know, these other little things. You might not have a problem with, we need to, we don't, you don't need more, you know, L-dopa or mucopurines. What if you don't need all those herbs because you just need testosterone or whatever? And let me ask this. I think maybe one of the reasons aging people, women, let's say, don't want to do it is because it will, but when I, if I go on that, do I have to stay on that forever? That's another thing I hear, you know? And I'm like, because I mean, I'm, re I'm all for it. Here's the thing. I'm going to replace all the things. I tell him like, look, I'm not trying to be 22. I get it. I'm not trying to not age. There's not a, a fake plastic injectable anything on my body. This is not about that. This is about, I know it's being, po I'm being poisoned to death. I know I'm living unnatural. I know my numbers are declining faster than they should if I was living in a primal, optimal environment. And I want to feel the best I can and not be on drugs. I don't think, I don't look at bioidentical hormone replacement as drugs at all. Or um, the body makes. Yeah, I'm like, this is what I'm doing. So as it's needed, you know, and it, and it is an art. And it, is it, you think it's some of that? Because that's some of the times the patients will say, well, how much does that cost? I'm like, yeah, it's a, yeah, you, you know. Mean, so what is your life worth? It's about $2.50 yeah. a day for a woman. But yeah, a couple but would you keep a woman on, let's say 70, 75? Like where, where is there a cutoff point to you? Yeah, heaven. Yeah, my oldest, my oldest lady is 92. My oldest guy is 90. Um, the thing is, this is, when would you stop insulin? I, I just, I, I got you. I'm just asking. I'm wondering because so I get asked these hey, questions. Well, come to me I get say, asked. They say, you guys, do I have to say that? The answer is no. Yes. If you don't like it, leave. And right. they, they keep coming back. And, yeah. and that's, that's why what my sister said. My sister's eight years older than me. So 58, seven, whatever. And she, you know, was on, a, you know, she's Stephanie. Cause I said, oh, Kim, I think I might need some things. And she's like, let me tell you, once I went on this, I will never no. come off of this stuff. That's a, it's yeah. like magic, you know? That's and I'm like, so okay, good. good. <laughs> There's no selling here. It's my job, your job is to educate. Yeah. Walk them down the journey. When they say, because most are coming to us because we're alternative. The yeah. good news is, you know, I've been trained all the other way as well. But I don't believe the, now, I'm not saying there's not a place for Wellbutrin. I'm not saying there's not a place for Zoll. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if you lose estrogen, why not replace estrogen? If you lose testosterone, why not replace testosterone? You talk about GABA. In the brain, natural progesterone binds receptor site for 30 hours, I mean, for, for 30 days, makes GABA. That's why you take it orally, it helps protect the brain. Yeah. You get a synthetic progesterone that bounds it for six months, it down regulates it. So these things we could do, our body, our body needs it. They're not, they're not optional here. So what I like to just know is, again, is example. Let's go over menopause again. A woman loses 5% of bone per year, okay? No matter how much vitamin D, which I love, calcium, which I don't love that much, you eat, and work out, you can't make more bone in menopause. You need osteoblasts. Osteoblasts only make bone via testosterone. If you go on testosterone, estrogen pellets together, you gain 8.3% of bone mass per year. Let's put it in real numbers. Around 50,000 women a year die of osteoporosis. Around 40,000 a year die of breast cancer. All right? We could almost eliminate osteoporosis to zero 
by taking bioidentical hormones to, to, to do that. Um, a woman, uh, number four cause of death of age of 70 is falling down. This goes away. Sarcopenia goes away. So it's not like your body can't live without it. It can't be optimal, but, we, there, but there's, there are repercussions for not having optimal levels. So you say how long, as long as you want. And when your body runs out, you're here before you know and go, like your sister said, I've, I've been on for 12, 12 years. My wife, when I placed my wife, uh, when she got placed 12 years ago, she go about a month in, she goes, where's it been her whole life? I go, I know, I was ignorant, I had no clue. I'm sorry. And yeah. it's just changed everything. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Well, let me, the last question, I think. This is a side note. Do you do peptides? Oh, yeah, pep love them. Okay, <laughs> okay. I didn't know if you did peptide therapy as well. Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah, because I'm... <laughs> I'm I can't find believer. any. I gotta talk to you. So I got I can't find something. Maybe you got the. Well, I'll walk you through the literature. I, need B, I can't buy. I can't buy any BAC right now. It's sold out everywhere. Yeah. Well, the the BPC one fifty seven. No BAC. The bacteria. Oh, oh BAC. The yeah. Water to yeah time. to reconstitute. We could talk because I got a guy a, a couple of places we could talk to. Okay. Good. I may have to just drive up. You know what? I you know. Our office we, in Charlotte. It's not that far. I know it's not that far. I mean, I need we. I have some labs I did about six months ago. I might feel like send those. Maybe we meet. I would be honored. Yeah, then we can do. You can see we need some post lab, whatever. Because I'm at a I'm at a tweaking point where I'm either gonna start some CJC EPA injections I, or something because I, I will I'm walk still you not those. on point, Doc. I gotta get it together. Well, I'm on. I'm on all. I'm, I'm on everything you just said. But they, I don't recommend them unless your testosterone is optimal because right. they use testosterone to do. I know, and I'm I'm on testosterone too, so that's what I'm saying. Well, we need to like kind of. We'll talk to cream versus. We should do it. We can have a whole thing. We can film it. We can make a whole thing out of it. I, the cool part with me is, everybody loves you. If I screw up on you, I'm toast. So I'll take I'll take that risk because. Yeah. But if I you, believe, but, but I believe, a six pack for <laughs> no, you're a 10. We can make you an 11. Okay. Healthy. That's where I'm at. Cause okay. this, this getting older thing is interesting. I mean, it's, it just is a woman. We, there is some change and it's like, I kind of had to explain it to my son, you know, recently he was like, mom, like I get it. And I was, it wasn't like a big thing, but I had to say, here's the thing. <laughs> I'm actually on my period right now, honey. And this one is a little bit more emotional than normal. I know I'm overreacting. So I'm going to need you to just step away from it. Yeah, just, 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 just. I was like, this is what a woman goes through who's who's 48. I, I need a minute here. Because um, it, it was different. I'm like, you know, just like I had to tell him about my mother. I'm like, you know, grandma wasn't always like that. And he was like, what? I was like, no, that's, that's, she doesn't have any hormones. That's why she's like this now. She didn't used to be like this. It's 76 and she should have been on stuff and well, whatever. She, she's got it now. I mean, that's the thing about Stephanie. It's like, it's just when would you not want to feel great? And yeah, and then and then and that, what I try to always do is show the medical part on the heart, the brain, the bone, that why we need that. Yeah, the 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 mental emotional part is like again, anxiety and depression are like with top number, like it's tired is part of that. It's like because it's in your head, it doesn't mean it's in your head, it's in yeah. your head because your brain's in your head, that's <laughs> why it's there. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so when's the book coming? When do you think? I'm hoping about two more months. Oh, our book now, though, the Hormone Handbook, which is a great book, I think. It's you get it from you can buy it on Amazon, but you can also just go to our website, uh, optimalbio.com. The free PDF version is right there. We give it away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. awesome. And then the next well, one will be a little more detailed for people like like you. Yeah, and it's Clinic more of like, I want to have one source, either article on breast cancer. Here it is. You know, here's prostate cancer. It is. I want it to be there to show what we've done our research on. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, well, I think that's it right now. I just, you know, you guys, I, I want to try to, I don't know, end the stigma on this a little bit and um, hormone replacement from, and people don't make the connection of hormones and mental health as much as I think they should. They're not okay. understanding sometimes that the thyroid. <laughs> depression, anxiety, psychosis, even uh, testosterone, depression, suicidal behavior, foggy brain, estrogen, foggy brain, progesterone, moody, depressed. If you don't have these things, those symptoms, are, are you mentally ill or do you have a, horm a hormone imbalance? Right. You know, so that's where I try to explain to people brain health equals mental health. Yep. Brain 
health equals behavioral health yep. and children, adults, I don't care what we're, what we're talking about. It's the same thing. If I can, that postulate of get that brain healthy and everything around it that makes it healthy, you have healthy behavior, you have healthy mental health. It's not a think about it problem. It's a, let's go in there and help the structure and function. Yeah, we and have hormones are really, really important to right. this story. Right. We have a lot of counselors and psychiatrists send us patients because then when they get to the, the, their, their client at optimal levels, they can really dig in and get good counseling done. It allows yeah. them to do that. I, that's, yeah. yeah. We're, we're close to opening in Greenville and Charleston. So that's even closer to you. The Greenville will be closer to you as well. So, oh, yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, awesome. I would love to go over your stuff with you. I would love to. Yeah, because I, I, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll talk. Um, all right, you guys. So reach out to them there. At, follow them at Optimal Bio. Uh, all words here on Instagram. I'll, it'll be all in the description. And um, that lots of you got lots of love on here. People He's Dr. B, save me, blah, blah, blah. There's They're so all you, things. Stephanie. It's all because of you. That's all I can No, I got it, guys. Oh, so let me just say, he goes, if we're looking for a specialist in our area, would any hormone doctor help with this, or do we search for a specific type of hormone expert? That's a good question. The what basic, can you suggest? The basic endocrinologist is the ba is like, it's like I, we used to be, right? So I would look for integrative. And what, we've been doing optimal bio. We've been doing Zoom conferences from people around the country the last seven years. So it's not because the last two years. We've been doing that for years. And we have patients. So we'll do a console, get labs, organize everything, and then we'll see where you're at. We have offices in Charlottesville, Virginia, Wilmington, uh, Char Charlotte, Cary, and Southern Pines, North Carolina. Soon to go to South Carolina, probably a few months. So mm -hmm. we're expanding. But again, we can always do a console like this, a real one on Zoom, get labs done. Because once I talk to somebody, get your labs done. I draw the pictures, we do that, and we can find some in your neighborhood. You can yeah, so let's say they live in California yeah. or Arkansas or something, um, so they can 100%. get some opinion from you and help you find somebody. We do it all. Um, yeah, because you're a pellet fan, right? You the like reason why is I want the best route of administration. That's also in our book. We're going to show yeah. why pharmacokinetically, shots, creams, oral, they have their, their place, but... There's nothing better than pellet because of the pharmacokinetics. It mimics our gonads better than anything else. In fact, there's a great book called Testosterone written out of Germany that says it's all, it's a, it's a shell, it's to, it's to show the science behind testosterone therapy, but to also promote their injections. In their treatment section, they say the best thing is the pellets. But the problem is it's a 12.7% pellet gets expelled. Well, our expulsion rate is less than 1%. In a woman, it's less than one in a thousand. So we fine tune our technique, whereas I'm also a pelvic surgeon. So we have our technique where we get the benefits without any downside. So, yeah, I mean, nothing is creams and shots. It's just they're not equals. It's a, it's not, it's a Camry versus a Bugatti. It's 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 just there's difference. It's um, that's why I wanted to show the route how superior it is. And the route the Pell's been used in women since 1935, men 1937, longer than anything else. The pellets have been used in women longer. Huh. Longer okay. than anything else. Hmm. I didn't know that. So, I love, you teach so many good things. You have, you already got a lot of factoids. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I love how you know the dates and the numbers. I'm like, oh, wow. Uh, okay. <laughs> all I know is, Ms. Stephanie, here's the goal. You do the same thing I do. You're passionate about people. And we're passionate about individuals. And I'm going to keep that, that passion real. Or you, your, your clients wouldn't see it, right? Yeah. And I just, I, all I do here for men is exactly what I do for myself. And for women, exactly what I do for my wife. And I can't, I, there's nothing here to sell. I just do what I, and I took, it took me, Greg Brandon, with the first time I read pellets, it took me 18 months to convince myself this was real. After you had a menu? No, before. To even oh, before, before my body. I got you, I got you to yeah. do it, yeah. I had yeah. to do my research. I had to find a good expert in the country. I, I was, I was the biggest skeptic there was. I started at 50. I wish I started when I was 40. I'm a little bummed at that, but yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, you guys. Please follow him, Optimal Bio. Check out their website. Book an appointment. Get yourself, please, you know, do not wait for an incompetent, you know, 10-minute. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to, Rockefeller, most physicians suck. And I don't have a problem saying it. I don't know how you can take care of somebody in seven to 10 minutes. You, you can't solve the problem you can't think they're overwhelmed in the hospital system they can't do much that's emergency care is what it should be used for if that you're expecting a ten dollar copay to optimize you it's never going to happen so 
if you want to get there, it is worth investing. Uh, my sister's a massage therapist with an autistic son at home who will never be independent. She doesn't have a lot of money, isn't married to a millionaire by any means, was divorced and left for broke. And she still values her health and she can pay for her hormones. So, you know, it, it, but she doesn't, uh, you know, buy Gucci bags. So it really is a matter of what you value right. in life and right. what you want to spend your money on and she wants to be there just so she can take care of her son as long as she can and that that's where life is so it really is a choice with where you want to put your money and and because i don't really like to play all that limitations that i can't afford it shit right um because i was raised that way we had no money and i'm like i will figure it out you know so <laughs> if it means i have to buy wear out the same sweater for 10 years i can do that so i can feel good right if i need it on my hormones and my health that's me Everybody has their own priorities, right? Yes. That's, I know that's how you are. So go and follow them and please take care of your health. Demand Labs, if you can't get them from your doctor, order them yourself or find a doctor, you know, like Dr. Brandon, okay? Because it's just, I I'm tired of seeing people so sick and tired when I'm like, it's just your thyroid or it's just your testosterone. I'm like, why don't you just do that? And they're like, what? I'm like, that's uh, all but, it is. <laughs> you but, know? Like, I don't think you need 14,000 more labs, you know, but. Well. I appreciate it, Stephanie, so okay. much. Okay. All right. Bye, guys. Hope to see you soon, too. You, too. Bye. Thanks.